what I want us to think about is this process. You've actually learned about expanding and factorizing before. We've done it quite a few times, but maybe you don't understand why we do it. So I actually want to take a step back. I'm not going to assume you're experts at this, even if you've seen it before. So expanding and factorizing, let's look at these one at a time. The first thing to note is that the reason why we have these together is that these are two sides of the same coin, right? These are opposites. If something is factorized, then you can expand it. And if something is already expanded, you can factorize it. So these are really doing one operation or doing it in reverse. And that's why we think of them together. Let's start with the first one, expanding. If I showed you something like this, you've had to deal with these without algebraic fractions, right? So you already know you how to do this. I can expand this, I can expand it. In fact, I'm even gonna put it inside this box, right? EG. What would it mean to expand this? What would you get as the answer? Five eight, Five eight plus 10, right? Now, I want you to think, you're quite good at doing this now, especially with simple examples like this. You're sitting down with a year seven or eight student and they've never seen this before. You can explain like how to do it, like where the five eight comes from and where the 10 comes from. But what are you actually doing? Like, what's the difference between left and right? Probably what most of you would say is, expanding looks like, get rid of the brackets. How did we get rid of the brackets? What did you do? For example, the five and the two, in what way did you combine them? You multiply them. So you get rid of brackets by multiplying. That's what it looks like, okay? Why do we do it? Why is this useful? Think back even to question one in the review that you did today. You did some expanding. You did it twice, in fact, on top of those fractions. <coughs> Why did you do it? Look at the line where you did it. What was better about it after it was factorized versus before? Hmm. Any thoughts? This is a hard question. This is not a simple question, so think about it. Why do we expand? Yeah. It makes it easier to simplify. If we want to get rid of some terms, right? Simplify things. I think if you have a look at your working, immediately after expanding, you collected like terms, didn't you? Right? So why do we do it? Uh, it makes it easier to collect like terms. This is not the only thing it does, but for now, this is the thing we're primarily interested in. So you don't have to write this down, but if the question was five times a plus two minus three a, well, exp expanding gives you a clear advantage here, doesn't it? Because once you've done that, you can say, oh, I can put those like terms together and I will get something, as Kate said, which is simpler than what I had before. So far, so good? Okay, so we understand expanding. Can you explain factorizing then? If I told you from the beginning that these are opposites to each other, two sides of the same coin, and this is the way we worded expanding, how would you word factorizing? What do you reckon, Alan? Um, Adding brackets by something like that. I'm gonna start by adding brackets. I think that's a great way to start because if we were getting rid of brackets before, if you factorize, you will have brackets where you didn't have them. But how do I do that? Okay, by <laughs> now, this is why we call it factorizing, right? We want to identify common factors. And you should, that's, please emphasize that. That's the idea, right? So you can factorize almost anything, right? We're looking at algebra at the moment, but you can, you've been factorizing numbers for years. 24 is a number and you can factorize it in lots of ways. Can someone give me an example? Six and four. Six and four. Another one? Eight. Eight. Three. Twelve. Two. Twenty-four. One. Okay. You've identified factors in there, but when you're factorizing with algebra, we're looking for common factors. Okay, and you don't need to write another example of this because you already have. There it is, right? 5a plus 10. You identify the common factor, which in this case was 5. And then you can take it out and add brackets. 
Does that make sense? Okay, again, and this is the hard question. Why do we do it? What advantage is there to factorizing? Why does factorizing make things easier sometimes? Let me give you an example. I'll build it off this one that we just had a look at. 5a plus 10. Here's something that's expanded, and you may want to factorize it. Here might be a case where factorizing is useful. Now, in this case, to make things simpler, it will be easier to do that. It's easier to work out how to make it simpler if this top thing is factorized, right? We already know what the factorization is. So how can you simplify this now? 550, so it's 1 and 10. Ah, so what you've seen is, by pulling out common factors, if there are common factors in other places, then you can simplify them out, like there are here. So you would say, there's a 5 there. If you take that out, you get left with a 10. And this is objectively better than what we started with. Do you agree? Does that make yeah. sense? Do you have a question, Ray? Is, is there a difference? Is it? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, right. So I, I will point out, if you're, if you're pretty cluey with like your numbers and all that kind of thing, and you can see a question really quickly, like there's nothing wrong with going straight there. You don't have to factorize. But number one, I don't know about you, but I don't see things like that straight away. I have to have this additional step. Number two, I'm going to give you stuff way more complicated than this. And you're going to encounter things where it's just not obvious at all. Or even if it's not obvious, I need you to show me. I need you to communicate that you know where these are from. Okay? Um, sometimes, particularly year 11 and 12, you've got a question that says, like, they actually give you the answer. They give you this. They know where you're going to end up. So the question is not about finding an answer. The question is about showing how you got there, showing the process. And factorizing helps that. How are we going to word this? We expand because it makes it easier to collect like terms. I would suggest we factorize because what? What did it allow us to do here? It enables us to cancel or simplify factors. We've seen it in algebraic fractions. Uh, because cancelling happens a lot in fractions, it makes them easier to work with. But there are lots of other cases too. Do you remember, again, turn to the back of the room. See how there's that poster about calculus, right? Calculus? When you're working with calculus, it is sometimes really, really important. See that mess of letters, right? All those processes that a lot of you are going to learn next year and the year after that. You can turn back to the front now. Those processes are so much easier sometimes if things are factorized, right? We don't know what those processes are, so I can't write them in here yet. But if you want, if you want, you can say also calculus. And next year, when you learn this, I hope that mental tag remembers you. Like, oh, this is why we had to spend so much time on factorizing. Be good at it because calculus relies on actually both of these. You can tell which operation you need to do, even without seeing the question, because if you remember what expanding and factorizing are, like, which, what, bless you, what do they do in relation to brackets? What are you asked to do with this? Get rid of them. They're there, so let's remove them. The way that we remove them is by multiplying, okay? So I'm going to do them one at a time. First pairing. Be careful. Let's do numbers, then we'll do program ones. So, negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. Okay. You can see now why we also invested some time in using the index laws earlier last week. You need to sort of be able to do this a bit, you know, on autopilot, not think too hard. X times X squared. X cubed. Fantastic. First term is done. Now I'm going to multiply through the next one. Always watch out for that negative. That is the most common error to make with all of these. Negative 5 times 4 is? Minus 20. And then you look at the protein rule. XY. That wasn't complicated, okay? Generally, people find <laughs> expanding much easier to do because multiplying, you can do it somewhat mindlessly. Factorizing, though, includes this skill. You have to look and see. So have a look at question five now. Again, even without being told the word for the question, you can see this is gonna be a factorized question, not expand, because there are no brackets, it's already expanded, so I'm gonna add some in, okay? 
I want to look for what are the common factors between the things that are there. Okay, let's let's just do it nice and slowly. Someone said two, six and ten are both even numbers. So let's just pull out the two. Okay, there's no reason why you have to do all of these in one here. So we'll just do it gradually. It's fine. When you take the two out, you're going to divide this by two and this by two. It's division because it's the opposite of expanding, which is multiplication. So what will be left when you divide this by two? Three. I haven't done anything with the negative, so it's still there. Do you agree? Like I haven't pulled the negative sign out over here. Divide this by two. Five. Five. T squared. T squared. I haven't done anything to the T, so they're still there. So this happens frequently. You factorize. That is factorized, by the way. But I can factorize further. What else can I take out? Okay, so t is also common. So there's already a 2 there. Now I'm also going to take the t out. Once it's been factorized, minus 3. What's left on the end? <coughs> then you look again. Is there anything else I can squeeze out of this? Negative. You can't squeeze the negative out. I could make this minus 2t. That would change it to a 3 minus 5t. That would be fine. I could just as easily just change this order, right? I could leave it as 2t and then just go 5t minus 3. There's not really any clear advantage to either of those. If you saw this answer in the back of the book and you had this answer on your page, those are both fine. Here's why. What is this question about? It's about expanding and factorizing. These are both factorized to the same amount. You've taken the same amount of stuff out. So be these both great. Okay.